Guys, Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about, off the back of Mr. X's video, we're talking about billet versus casting. So in that, I kind of just called him a dick, and um, but I wanted to focus on actually the subject that was brought up in a negative way, but it was brought up nonetheless in that uh, stream of comments and stuff. So, you know, we're talking about billet and we're talking about casting, and I was saying that billet costs an awful lot of time an awful lot of programming time which a lot of people don't realise the beautiful thing about programming is as soon as you've done it pretty much it's ready to rock and roll and you can just save it and use it again and again and again so the 50 hours really aren't that much of a problem versus making um, you know plugs and cores and um, you know basically doing the wooden models the drafts and all the rest of it of an actual block to begin with that usually takes even longer because you've got to design the thing and then you've got to make it um, so making the moulds and all the rest of it for sand casting and what have you does take an awful long time, a lot longer than your 50 hours of process, uh, your, you know, your um, programming for CNC. However, um, as soon as you've got all in moulds, then you can really ramp up the time. So you are literally, you can pour every two minutes, every three minutes if you've got a quick enough process. You know, so it's heavy investment initially, and then it's not afterwards. So why do you know? You know, you go to these, you go to these companies, and they will billet you with a CNC, you know, a five-axis machine. They will machine you a block. They will machine you cranks, camshafts, or grind them. You know, why do these places exist? Well, it's because there's a market and money to be had at the end of the day. You know, you cannot, or they cannot afford, to do one-off racing machines with the casting process. Like I said. The amount of money that has to go into the cores and the plugs and all the rest of it, all the actual, you know, heavy industry stuff, you know, these foundries are massive. They're not, you know, they're dealing in with hundreds of tons and thousands of tons of aluminium, not half a ton. Um, you know, it's a mass manufacturing process where you need factories and factories and factories. With billet, it's like 3D printing in a sense. With billet, you just get a block and it costs you a lot in tools. Uh, it costs you a lot of you know, tool time, cutting time, and all the rest of it, but you can make anything you want out of it, and there's an awful lot of shit being made. Uh, you know, CNC, so people have this thing that CNC is better. Is it? Uh, yes, because um, when you have a block of aluminium that's solid, a billet, um, it can be very well controlled about it, you know, it's milled, milled as in not as in cut, as in rolled. Um, usually it's milled and, you know, they basically can chop off the end bit here when they make a, a large quantity of it. They can chop off a strip here and they can test the dra grain structure in here and on this end and then pretty much it will be the same all the way through. So they, the, the confidence level of the quality of the aluminium goes up. Where you do casting, you can get inclusions, you can get voids, you can get um, hydrogen embrittlement, you can get all sorts of other things and all lovelies and nasties. This is why in top fuel dragster racing, they basically, for top fuel, they'll only accept uh, billet machined um, CNC machine blocks because you are confident that the material is the same all the way through. You know, the other thing is as well is you get shrinkage, so you've got to um, compensate for that with casting and all others, you know, the lo lovelies and stuff like that. You've also got to worry about, um, uh, you, you know, your, core, your cores and how they're attached on the inside. One of the, the bad things about CNC is that it can't really do internal stuff though. So, you know, if you've got a, a passage that's really weird like this for your, um, that's inside your cylinder head because you've got valves and you've got spark plugs and you've got this, that and the other and you've got little pockets that you want cooling to go into. You look at, I'll show you now um, some of the core designs for the water jackets in cylinder heads. You cannot machine that out of CNC. So casting, you can actually get um, better, uh, 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 a more optimised design out of casting. This is why Ferrari still cast their engines. 
when they cast, you know, they X, like I said before, they X ray their parts to make sure that they are top quality, there's no big voids in it or anything like that, uh, gas pockets or anything stupid like that. And if they get a failure, they'll just basically, you know, chuck it in the recycling, melt it down again, and just cast it again. Um, the one thing about billet is, is it does give you a big choice of materials because with casting you can only use certain materials. There's only so many alloys that will properly cast. You know, um, with aluminium, you know, a lot of them are eutetric um, aluminium alloys. So they've got silicon in and magnesium and a few other jubblies to make them basically flow better. To cast, um, you know, you try and cast uh, beer cans. It's a horrible aluminium to fucking cast with. Uh, any kind of extruded aluminium, they've got added things in them to make them basically slip better when they're extruded. Extruded aluminium is horrible to cast. Um, it, again, the silica content, and I think it's something else that's um, it's, it's same like anodizing. Extruded aluminium anodizes beautifully. Um, cast aluminium doesn't really like to. Uh, uh, cast very well again because the high silica content if you do a, a straight flash anodizing you know no color added with uh, the cast stuff usually it goes ever so slightly brown and murky and that's the silica coming back out um the silicon uh, silicon coming out and all the rest of it um but yes yeah, so you know with casting you've only got so many options of what you can cast with with uh billet machining and all the rest of it then you've got more you've got more options because you know you can cast a block and then you can machine that out if you really wanted to um, like with cast iron stuff like that um, yeah so you know Billy gives you more options especially for crankshaft for a certain type of steel a lot of these steels um, you know they can't some of these steels can't be forged or they don't like forging so much so to speak um, you know so there's pros and cons to both but casting is a lot better for optimization Casting is better for mass production because it's quick and cheap, and billet machining is just a you know it's just time expense. It's time expensive. It's material expensive. It's tooling expensive. It's only the CNC machine, believe it or not, it's actually quite cheap. That is the cheapest part of the CNC process. Is the fact that it's the actual machine itself is cheap. Now you might not think half a million quid or 150 grand is cheap, but it is compared to the entire factory you need to do casting properly with cores and all this. Now, yes, you can do it. I'm going to do it in the future. We can do it at home, proper uh, core casting and all the rest of it. You know, we'll do some investment casting with wax and all the rest of it, lost wax process, um, which is a, an, in, a half warehouse. It actually gives you quite high tolerances. There's uh, wax casting ceramic wax casting but we'll do some of that in the future but that's the difference between the two um, I will do videos because I know people are going to ask difference between cast pistons and machine pistons or forged pistons and all them different types and generally other stuff like uh, rods and what have you we're going to talk about aluminium rods and titanium rods and you know a lot of people have been asking which is fine which is good actually because that gives us you know more videos and stuff um, what materials are used for what? You know, someone said, why don't you use tungsten carbide as your piston and cylinder sleeve? Why don't you use titanium for uh, um, for crankshafts and stuff like that? It's a good, que good questions, and we will get to them as we plough through the videos. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.